Welcome to Channel 15. Uh, today we have with us Carl Steinhardt, <clears throat> the town administrator for the town of Southwick, and he's going to give us some brief explanations about the upcoming town meeting that is on the 18th. Well, Carl will give you the details on the location and the time of the meetings. And welcome, Carl. Thank you, Dennis, for um, setting this up and inviting us from you know, 15 folks. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what we have uh, here before us is the planning process where we're going to be uh, going to have town meetings on Tuesday, May 18th at the high school, just as we have the last two town meetings where we had one last June and one last March. Uh, these town meetings are being held outdoors at the request of the, uh, the Board of Health and because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, pandemic uh, regulations under the governor's orders. So um, we just feel that this is uh, the safest way to do it and it worked out well last year. Um, this May 18th date, obviously the, um, the moderator will have the ability to move the day of the meeting if we have any issues with bad weather. Because that is always a risk when you hold a town meeting. As you recall that town meeting in March last year, when we were voting on items for the lakes, we had to uh, move the meeting because of a snowstorm to the next day, Dennis. I remember that. And, and because, but we had to take care of the boats because we had to do those um, lake treatments in April. So that's why that, that drove that calendar and that schedule. Um, the warrant article explanations that we're going to go over, Dennis, are uh, will be able to be found on the town's webpage at uh, www.southwickma.org. We would ask people to access and review the web page related materials on the town meeting and the budget book. Uh, the town report has also been placed online, Dennis, for 2020. So when you get a chance, you should see that. It's got a great cover sheet uh, on some of the pitches that we did from the 250th. So that's going to be good. And the other item we got to remember is the uh, elections, which are going to be Tuesday, May. 11th um, from seven in the morning till eight o'clock at the senior center here at town hall. So there's a lot of important items that people should take advantage of in activities over the next two weeks. Um, in terms of the first warrant, Dennis, that's the special town meeting. Uh, and that is gonna be at six o'clock. I'm gonna do a little sh uh, screen sharing here for you, Carl. So we'll sure. put up the uh, explanations. Oh. Okay, that's the annual town meeting. We'll go to the special town meeting, 6 p.m. There we go. Yep, there it is. So as you can see, um, <clears throat> Dennis, in terms of um, all of these articles are essentially housekeeping issues to uh, where we transfer funds from one account to the other uh, to finish the year. Um, none of them require any additional tax funds. Uh, the first one relates to the uh, transfer of funds to cover the negotiated agreements for staff for a total of 75 plus employees in the present fiscal year. Uh, these funds are coming from the salary reserve accounts and available funds that are set aside. Uh, and again, that's the salary reserve accounts. They're also going to help backfill expenses for people who've been out on job injuries or sicknesses, FMLA leaves, um, substitute clerks having to come in and help out, and then any existing services that we needed to do for COVID-19 responses, where we had to bring in additional um, people to help out with uh, custodial functions to clean our buildings more thoroughly because of the pandemic issues. And of course, Dennis, I'm sure you saw those people going from buildings to buildings on a regular basis doing that extra work. And they also had to- Great job, it's a great job they did. Oh, they did, they've done a great job as all professional staff in the town, um, especially with the issues related to early voting, you know, so. It wasn't easy. No, 
so uh, so that's the issue on that one. Straightforward housekeeping issue. Um, Article two is our snow and ice um, vote that we take every year to close out the snow and ice budget where, where we have the required overtime and hired vendors and salt that we have to um, uh, account for to treat the roads. And this will allow us to close out our books um, without a deficit as of June 30th. Otherwise, uh, we would have to carry that on to the next year's tax rate. And why would you wanna do that when you have the money to settle the bill now? Uh, the other thing it does, Dennis, was last August, we had um, Tropical Storm Isaiah. Mm. And um, that uh, was over, what, $60,000 of, um, of additional cleanup expenses that the town incurred. And we did have a permission from um, the state DOR to incur that deficit. Well, now we got to pay it back. So we're using um, uh, free cash that's been certified to help liquidate that bill. And uh, so that's an important thing. And then Article 3 is our annual deposit to our OPEB account, which is um, an accounting um, standard that we have to follow each year. And it has to do with making sure that we can uh, meet our obligations to pay for post employment healthcare expenses on a, you know, as a page you go, but we also want to use these funds to supplement that so that we'll have a tool and we have monies to put aside to cover those costs. Uh, the fund will be holding a considerable amount of dollars over the course of its life to uh, adjust for those costs because we want to make sure that we don't um, have any budget concerns. And uh, it's also something that comes up every time we go to do a bond rating exercise with, uh, with Moody's. They wanna make sure that we're accounting for deposits to the OPEB fund. And um, it's also something that our outside auditors, uh, you know, like us to do. It's important. Yeah, it's very important to, to make sure that we as an organization uh, pay for the obligations that relate to our employees staff because they're the most important asset that we have Dennis. Um, and then the fourth and final uh, article relates to a transfer for the Lake Management Committee. They carry funds uh, to deal with issues uh, relating to beavers on uh, Canal Brook. And this year they did not have to use their operational money, but uh, they would like us to transfer it into a capital line item that will make it available for emergencies um, going forward in the future without having to do an annual reappropriation. And, and Dennis, I know you've been down to these sites uh, as the conservation coordinator and you see the importance of doing this. And you can't plan when these things are gonna happen. They happen spontaneously. So it's a good idea to do that, to transfer that money. Right, so it's just a straightforward, you know, uh, transfer from an operations account to a capital account, which then allows us to carry the money forward. So that's the, um, those are the housekeeping items, Dennis, that finish off the, um, the current fiscal year we're in now, which is fiscal year 21. So that shouldn't take more than uh, 15 minutes and we should be able to get onto the town meeting, the annual town meeting at uh, 615, hopefully promptly. And uh, will... yes, yep. That is the um, that's our general um, approach to things that we want to just deal with that housekeeping thing fairly quickly, and then we want to go on to the uh, the annual meeting, which is uh, far longer than last year's because last year's meeting we had to put a lot of things on hold. So some of these things are also last year's items that were deferred, like the the road acceptance stuff. All right, so, so we will want to go to the annual town meeting. Yep. Yeah. And again, Dennis, we want to encourage people to uh, view all of the necessary related documents that are referenced in the warrant article explanations or the town meeting warrants uh, at the town webpage on uh, www.southwickma.org. Um, so it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be at the high school at 615. 
So we're, we're asking obviously people to show up a little after 5.30 to make sure they get their seats, which are gonna be um, all um, spaced apart because of COVID-19 um, guidelines that our local Board of Health is using and people should be on wearing a mask because they still wanna make sure that that's happening. And there will be accommodations for uh, porta potties also? That is correct, sir. Uh, along with the efforts that you and Peter Cowles are gonna do to uh, broadcast the meeting live and record it, there'll be several porta, party, porta potties around the perimeter of the meeting space so that people can take advantage of that if they have the need. And there'll be, um, there'll be extra masks if we need it. There'll be um, seating for people who are non-voters unless they're elected, they're uh, voted onto the floor and there'll be seating for people that uh, if they choose not to, uh, I guess wear a mask, I suppose, they'll have to be in another type of seating. Excellent. So, so safety is gonna be first and foremost, um, what the uh, police and fire, the health director and the town moderator are gonna be asking for everybody's cooperation. And there'll be uh, sufficient lighting for everybody able to uh, see what's going on. Yeah, um, we have um, lined up some additional portable lighting if it becomes necessary, uh, depending upon how long the meeting goes. Excellent. So if you're ready, we'll move on to the uh, explanation for the Warren articles for the annual town meeting. Sure. And, um, Just put that on the screen. On the screen with you. Yes, I can see them now, Dennis. Very good. Okay, obviously the, uh, just like in other previous meetings, uh, we start at 615. Article one just references the fact that we've called the town election, which will be Tuesday, May 11th. Uh, we ask that people come to town hall at the senior center in the back, like they did for last year's elections and take advantage of, um, of the easy access in and out of, uh, the rear of town hall. And then articles two, three, four, and five, Dennis, are housekeeping issues that relate to the uh, accepting the town reports, appointment of minor officers, selling and trading obsolete equipment, and applying and accepting for grants. So those four will probably be done in one single vote because they're all simple majorities. Any nice. on that one, Dennis? No, just general housekeeping that we do every every town meeting. Yep, and then uh, then we get into the uh, the important items that we want to present to the town meeting members. The first item being the road work. Um, as you know, Southwick has been embarked the last couple of years on some road projects, and we're hopeful that people will see that work happening. There's more work being lined up right now for Tannery Road. And we have much more work to do. Um, there is a cost for this. This is something that people are going to be, you know, paying for through their tax rate, but it is an important item that's been identified by the general public and made known to their public officials is that roads, roads, roads. So this is another step in that process. We've also made this something that we've, um, shared with our um, uh, public delegation at the state house. So the first item before we, get, item before we get is the issues relating to the, um, uh, let's see, a million dollars for the roads. And then the, and then the second the item is the, uh, another dump truck, Dennis. Another dump truck. Yep. Uh, this is probably our last big one for now. We've done, this will be the fourth big one that we've replaced in a number of years. So, and these are multi-use units. These are units. Yes, so, well needed. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. the next yeah. item is the uh, ambulance. And of course that relates to uh, our ALS service, we also have a, uh, an older unit that's gonna go from being the first line unit 
um, it will become the second line unit and uh, we'll get a new one to be the primary unit. It's kind of important. Yes. And then Article 9 relates to uh, the water transmission main improvements. As you know, uh, a few years ago, Dennis, we did do a water line project on College Highway north to the Westfield line. And this is going to allow us to go from the pump station at the line to the, the water transmission line that the city line at the city. So that we getting the residents all the opportunity to have Southwick's fine water. Yep. And this is to supplement. This is to supplement. So okay, uh, let's see. Article 10 is the annual budget. And that's to make sure that we go through the all the different line all the different line that relate to the different departments and their capital needs. Uh, and that was done through a series of uh, five or six budget, five or six budget here. select board, select board. Finance, committee. finance committee. A lot of people uh, gave of their time on weekends and evenings uh, to work with the different boards and committees and departments to put together, um, you know, a reasonable budget to address where we are at this point in time in our community and what our needs are that have been identified. We should all thank those volunteers for their the work that they provide. Yeah. And then uh, Article 11, Dennis, is a, uh, a revolving fund annual spending limit. And as you can see, you can see a series, series of different accounts, of different from accounts from inspectors, inspectors police, police, lake permitting, um, council on aging, and then local wetland applications was the newest one added last year. Last year. So that's number that's 11. Number 11. Article, 12 Article 12 is, uh, and the next bunch of these are community preservation related items. And this is the, uh, the regular one where we do the community preservation annual budget, the set asides. And this has been worked up. Latest information. Latest information. Out and has, out has. This is uh, housekeeping, also correct. Yes. Yep. This is housekeeping. So it sets up the reservations, as is the next item, which is the community preservation admin account, admin account. which is five percent of, of the unreserved. Unreserved. So that's a housekeeping account. And now we get into some good ones. Um, obviously, uh, yes. obviously yeah. Article, 14 Article 14 relates to the need to improve our existing trails, uh, repair eroded areas, procure and install uh, directional signings, uh, signing. Uh, People can get around that facility, interpretive habitat descriptions, all of which are going to be at the town's newly acquired North Pond Conservation Area. And the town is applying for a funding source through the Commonwealth Trails Grant. And this is going to, this is going to supplement, supplement that. that. And it is a beautiful, it's a beautiful facility, Dennis. I go down there on a regular basis with my family members. Family members. It's well used. It's good to see that a lot of people are out there taking advantage of that beautiful piece of property and we're going to make it even better and easier for people to access it. So this, uh, this seems like a good article. Yep. The next one the really next relates, one relates to, to a withdrawal from the, from the housing funds of the CPC. And this is going to help the planning board um, retain the services of a consulting firm. Consulting firm. For the housing, the housing section of a new master plan up, upgrade, because our master plan was originally written in 1967 and it was updated, um, updated, updated with some changes in the 1990s. But now we need to go to the next step and do a an, another upgrade. 
a little so, overdue. Yeah. So this is going to help, um, obviously, evaluate housing projects. The next item, number 16, relates to uh, monies for the restoration and rehabilitation of stained glass windows at the old library. Um, the old library was uh, sold around 2019 um, to uh, an, another individual who's in the process of doing a lot of work to upgrade it and upgrade it in compliance. So, uh, and we do have a hundred year historical preservation restriction on the property. So this is going to um, allow them to address an issue related to the stained glass windows. So, all right. Is, is an appropriation of $5,000 to assess the original slate roof and cupola on the historical part of the 1940s original structure at uh, 11 Depot Street. And it's to help us determine a future course of action to make sure that we appropriately preserve and restore it. As you know, Dennis, that was originally the, um, uh, the fire station, but it was also the town hall it was the police station and it was the bus garage. Wow. So served many purposes. When I came here in the 1980s, it was being used for all four of those functions. And then still in use. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. slowly, Town Hall made sure that it, it uh, took advantage of the consolidated school to um, renovate it and repurpose this building and bring it into the future. So, and that was done in the 90s. And then, of course, there was a new uh, fire station was built, and the uh, the buses were able to create a garage uh, for themselves uh, over near Woodland, and to store the buses that used to be where the fire station is now. So that then became a um, a location where we renovated it into the uh, uh, the police station to meet their needs. It's a history right there. In oh, and, and Dennis, I've been here since day one of uh, dealing with those issues from the 1980s on. So uh, this is to make sure that we appropriately take care of an old historic asset. Article 18, it, as you know, uh, a year ago, March, we appropriated funds to do an alum treatment which was recommended for the Congamon Lakes, the three ponds there, the uh, North, Middle, and South Ponds. And um, the treatment was done in uh, April and uh, the lakes uh, had a, a very good season last summer. And, with, and because of the pandemic, Dennis, it was never more important than ever to make sure that the lakes would be fully be able to be used during the summer and that we wouldn't be subject to any algae bloom. Very successful treatment, I understand. And it was great to yep. see the pond in that kind of condition this year, this last year. So, so that was important as well as, you know, making sure that people could use our public parks and our um, right. trails and everything because everybody was pretty well cooped up for the for the winter. Absolutely. So, so uh, this represents the second payment on that bond. Article 19. Yep. Okay. Article 19 is the uh, school assessment from the uh, South Victorian Regional um, Granville Regional School District for next year's operating budget in South as the other uh, member communities has to uh, pay an assessment. And our assessment is generally in the uh, 84, 85% range. And this is uh, to meet our obligations of paying our shear for the town of Southwick, of which all of the um, buildings on the campus reside. Article 20 is the um, 
warrant article that requests the approval for their borrowing each year for their financial um, capital improvements and acquisitions. And this is where they deal with, um, <clears throat> you know, items for the different buildings and, you know, within the buildings improvements uh, to make sure they, they keep up with upkeep, but also replacements. So um, we want to make sure that we uh, review those and go over those things with them and support them at town meeting. Um, articles 21, 22, 23, and 24 relate to Revere Road. Um, it was an issue that we've been working on with the neighborhood in the last couple of years where, they, where this road is, um, uh, needs to be accepted. It's presently not an accepted road. So these articles are gonna help us um, accomplish a whole host of things, Dennis, with uh, survey, uh, the right of way boundaries, easement documents, appraisals and takings that are all required to begin and follow through the process of acceptance as a town road. And the select board, the planning board, the DPW will all be performing their necessary roles to complete the project in the, uh, and when we're done with this, the acceptances of adding this roadway in its linear feet are gonna help us uh, become eligible for additional chapter 90 funds, which are road funds that come from the state. That would be good to get some additional funds. Yep. So that represents articles 21 through 24. Article uh, 25 is a, um, an issue related to the planning board's um, need to be able to employ outside consultants. There are times when a planning board even with technical staff and planners and so forth, um, end up having other issues come before them where they want to be able to hire consultants for technical assistance to help them review applications by people. So, and it's usually can be for like large uh, types of uh, businesses and things like that. So this is a, uh, something that the planning board has already held a hearing on. And it's going to the floor as a request to the voters. I know the Conservation Commission has had that ability for a while and they've uh, used it quite a few times. It really is a good thing to have at your disposal. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. I mean, it's no different than any board ought to have the tools that they need, especially with their, you know, with their citizens. They want to be able to um, make sure that they can. Uh, you know, get the help when they need it. Uh, Article 26 is a housekeeping issue and the um, uh, planning board wants to remove the term grandfathered as it's no longer used by the Massachusetts court system and the town would be bound to apply the state of Massachusetts law regulation. So that's more of a, a something to modernize our language and make it appropriate and take out uh, words or phrases that just aren't appropriate anymore. Um, Article 27 is to allow amendments to our uh, sign by law that reflect issues around electronic variable message signs in residential zones. Because sometimes we have businesses that are in residential zones but they haven't been able to appropriately take advantage of electronic message signs because they have not been able to uh, uh, see how that they're, how that they're in those zones. Yep, you wanna be fair. Yep. So let's see, the next item is article 27. And that relates to allow for large scale ground mounted photovoltaic systems in an R40, R20, R20A and R20B zones on a parcel with a minimum of 20 acres in the ability to meet the conditions of the bylaw. So those, um, again, that was something that the planning board held a hearing on and they want to be able to um, 
make these changes in our solar energy uh, related zoning bylaws. And that is Article 28. Um, that is, yeah. And that's quite a few pages. As you'll see yeah. in the warrant, that takes up quite a few pages in the um, in the warrant. Probably a good time to remind everybody to go to the town website to look at this information, review it before the town meeting. It'll help the town meeting run a lot smoother. Yep. Okay. It's always good to ask questions at the town meeting, but it's nice if people do their homework and are well versed before they get there. Absolutely, uh, I concur with that, Dennis. It's it's one of those things where you want to make sure that you can take advantage of it. Um, okay, so the next two items relate to stormwater bylaws, uh, number twenty nine and thirty. The bylaw change will bring the town into compliance with the new. Nippities, National Pollution Discharge Elimination System. Does that sound right, Dennis, as the acronym? That sounds right to me. MS4 stormwater regulations administered by the Mass DEP and the EPA. And up to this point in time, it was something that was located in our um, zoning bylaws. But under these legislative activities, some of it is gonna be moved out to create a standalone general bylaw and to assign some of the responsibility of uh, monitoring it and enforcing it to our stormwater coordinator who is under our DPW department. And I know all the boards support this article because it's gonna make this process a lot more efficient and easier to comply with. And they're also okay with um, Article 30 that relates to that too, Dennis? Yes, sir. Because one is one is the creation of the, um, the deletion and the zoning bylaws and creation of a general bylaw. And then under Article 30 is, uh, it relates to amending the code to amend the chapter 315. Um, and I believe, what is that? The um, subdivision bylaws, Dennis? Subdivision bylaw. And it's going to be moved, and I believe everybody is in support of this uh, amendment. Okay, good. Good. And then the next item, um, Article 31, relates to one of the different uh, five of the criteria that are required. As you know, um, the uh, issues relating to communities becoming green energy designated has uh, become a growing issue in the last several years. Um, there are hundreds of Massachusetts cities and towns that are now green energy community designated and Southwick um, has been reviewing this for a number of years and uh, the select board decided that this was the time to work with the, the planning board and the building inspector's office and other offices to achieve a green energy status uh, from the town. And this would also allow us to apply for um, grant funding that comes along for energy efficiency projects, which could be solar projects, street light projects, um, furnaces, boilers, you know, things of that nature that any large, um, you know, business and, and uh, industry um, entities want to be able to take advantage of. And the town um, is a large uh, commercial operation. So we're, we're just a governmental um, not-for-profit. So uh, this is going to allow us to address one of those criteria, which is uh, your stretch code only relates to the new construction of different buildings. It does not apply to renovations, repairs, alterations or additions to existing homes or commercial buildings. This is important. something that applies to the future going forward. There's no economic obligation for existing owners. So, so moving on to the last article, number 32. Yep, um, article 32 is something that the uh, select board uh, the police department 
um, have been looking at for a number of years with the town attorney. And there's a, a whole host of different licenses, de uh, Dennis, that are out in the community that relate to um, liquor licenses, managers for liquor license establishments, uh, registered marijuana facilities, um, hawkers and peddlers, solicitors, canvassing that's going around in town, ice cream truck vendors, junk dealers, secondhand articles, antiques, pawn dealers, hackney drivers, which are which essentially are like cab drivers and limo drivers. So this is just to make sure that the police have another tool to address um, uh, the background checks for these entities to make sure the safety of our citizens and the ability to regulate our use of occupational licenses that they're gonna be responsibly used and that uh, the license activities will be conducted lawfully and do not uh, detract from our neighborhoods as a whole. So if these businesses that go out into the community that are canvassing and soliciting, uh, we wanna make sure that they've been properly vetted in the, the background checks. And that, Sounds like a great thing. Sounds like and something this is the tool. I mean, I don't know, Dennis, if, if you've ever had people knocking on your door before for things, mm -hmm. uh, in some of the neighborhoods, this is an issue. And what happens is people end up calling the police. And that's why we always want to make sure that people check in ahead of time with the different licenses that we require them to get. Well, now this is a step further because you want to make sure that, you know, if people are out there selling ice cream to kids at events, that their backgrounds have been checked. Absolutely. So, and that all comes down to safety first. So that the uh, new incoming chief of police, uh, Robert Landis, uh, has been working on uh, with our office and the select board. And this is something that we are hoping that the people will be supportive in allowing this bylaw to be approved and put in place as a new tool to make sure that we can maintain um, safety in our neighborhoods, but at the same time, allow people to um, have the choices of making uh, purchases for services that come to them. So um, Dennis, that wraps up the, um, the articles that I have. And of course um, it's uh, 31 articles and it's uh, 31 pages. So there's a lot of material that we want people to um, uh, make advantage of uh, the, the web page by going on and reviewing the warrants and preparing before they come to town meeting so they already know what, what questions they have. And if they have any questions ahead of town meeting, they can certainly reach out and speak to the entities that are requesting those warrant articles. Did you want to say a few words about our newly elected town moderator? Um... Uh, sure. We, we certainly welcome Celeste St. Jake's aboard. Um, she attended last year's meeting and was, was watching uh, Mr. Putnam conduct the meeting. She has, uh, as you can see by the emails you've been getting too, she's been very actively engaged the last number of months in terms of um, researching what she needs to do, preparing for the meetings, uh, preparing for the types of votes that moderators have to um, uh, rule on, uh, the procedures, coordinating things with the uh, town clerk's office, the select board's office, um, the uh, town attorney's office. So um, I think we need to uh, uh, work with Celeste and support her in her first meeting uh, as she's taking on a very important job. And, um, you know, um, we wish her great success in this and uh, welcome her aboard as um, for her first uh, big meeting. And, you know, it, here it is, another challenge for somebody trying to run a meeting uh, during a pandemic. Well, thank you so much, Carl, for your in-depth uh, explanations of the Warren articles. And again, we'll remind people to go to the webpage to review these before the meeting. That would help everybody. Yep. And one more time, the meeting date is? Is uh, Tuesday, May 18th. And don't forget to vote on Tuesday, May 11th. 
Thank you very much, Carl. We appreciate your time. Dennis, thank you for hosting this. I appreciate the work you do. Thank you. Okay.